Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I'm going to show you just a few different things that you can do with the palette knife. Hopefully these will be kind of unexpected and a lot of fun for you to see. And of course, if you're enjoying this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I've went ahead and just mixed a little bit of, this is like a color stream, right? It starts with a light gray and ends in a dark, almost black. So that's kind of neat. I'm going to go right here in the middle of the road, scoop up some. And I, I went ahead and just coated the entire canvas with a soft sky blue color. This is all wet and I just did it with the brush and then I just quickly with the three quarter brush did a couple of lines because I want to get more than just one, one painting thing out of this canvas. So anyways, here we go. Let's do it first. The first crazy thing we're going to do today is some clouds. And yeah, you can do them with the palette knife. This is a good palette knife and it's super kind of tough to, <laughs> to see on the video, but actually maybe you can see it. See how it bends there right in the middle? That's important. You want to, you want to get a knife that bends in the middle not bends down here where it connects to the handle because that's going to cause you problems. So when you have one of these in person, you can, you can see that more easily, especially when you paint because it helps to grind the paint in to the canvas. Very important. Now, when you paint with a palette knife, a couple things that are great, and a couple things that are tough. I'll give you the tough part first. The hardest part is to create variation in color. The brush, really easy. The palette knife, really difficult, in my opinion to create a variation in color. That's why I did the color stream. The things that are easier is to get a beautiful, broad, you know, impressionistic effect. You can get a really, a very easy impressionistic effect, which is kind of fun. You don't have to work at it too hard to get something that looks really, really interesting. So anyways, there you go. Obviously, if I was doing a palette knife painting, I would do the I would do the sky with the palette knife. It just takes so long that I decided just, you know what, the sky wasn't the point. It really, it's gonna paint just about the same anyways when you paint over it, it's gonna be similar. So I just did it with the brush to save some time. Now I went ahead and mixed up a nice light color up here. It's mostly just a peach, a very light peach color. So anyways, scoop up a little bit of that on the knife. Here, just in case you were curious, I kind of like to mush the color out and then just scoop up a little bit. It kind of layers some on the, on the tip of the knife. You don't have to go crazy getting the perfect straight edge of paint on there. Just slap some on there, especially when we're doing something as loose as this. Other things you may need to get it a little more even or careful, but eh, I'm not going to tell you to, to be careful if you don't have to be. So there you go. Now I'm just going to now look, you do have another side to this knife. You got this small side and that's really, really nice for, for blending areas like this. See that you can kind of get in and get yourself a little more detail. And then see, the harder you smoosh, the more it mixes, and there's your mid-tone. So you have highlight first and mid-tone second. You just work your way across the cloud doing that. Looks like I mixed up a little too much paint there, but we use it in the next area. So you're really almost, almost surprising how little paint you actually need. I mean, it does take more, but it doesn't take as much as you might expect. Good stuff. Keep this going. Build up layers. Don't just think because you're painting with a palette knife, all the rules go away. There. Now that we're almost done with this cloud, I'm just going to break up some of these large dark areas with this some gray. It's almost the same color as the sky. Took a little color and threw it over here. There. See that? That's great. It helps break it up, soften it quite a bit. All right, I like that. That's pretty cool. Maybe a little softening right there. Good. Okay, now here's the maybe the last kind of interesting part is really the last thing we have to do is just take our clean palette knife and and rub. And I'm gonna rub carefully and wipe. And this takes a while, so I'll just kind of show you how to do it. Just rub and wipe. This is blending with the knife because we can do that. There you go. So that works, but it doesn't work if your knife gets clogged up with paint. It only works when your knife is clean. So keep that in mind. You can only blend one area at a time and then you have to wipe it off. See how that smooths it out though? It makes it kind of pretty. Yeah, good stuff. Up in here needs a lot of that. Now I'm going to add with our three quarter brush, a little bit of a background landscape here. 
So as you can see, we kind of just took a few more minutes softening the clouds up there. And that's about as soft as you're going to get clouds of the palette knife there. Cause there's a point where you just keep, you just start to make mud if you keep messing with them. So that's about where I stopped there. You see, it doesn't look a whole lot different, but it's about as, you know, it's about as soft as you would ever want a palette knife cloud to be, I think. So anyways, back down to here, what we're doing, I'm just brushing in what feels like a little meadow and that's great. But what, what happens if, you know, you want to do something different? Well, we can use a palette knife to do something different. I'm gonna have a little green in here. Let's just work our green in. And pretty soon you're gonna get tired of smooshing in the grass and you're gonna want some texture. Normally I would grab a fan brush, but what would happen if we grabbed a, grabbed a palette knife? Well, let's try it out. I'm not a big expert on painting grass with a palette knife, but you know what? It makes sense that we could probably do it. So let's, let's smoosh in some dark down here. I could care less what this is. And I would do this with the palette knife, but it would take longer. So I'm just going to put it down. And the point is not to make a palette knife only painting, in which case I would just do everything with it. <laughs> I'm trying to show you some different things you can do with a palette knife in a regular painting, if you like. It's not, not exclusive to a palette knife painting. So I want these, I want these techniques to be able to kind of, you know, melt together with brush work as well, you know, to fit well with a, with a painting that has a lot of brush work. Sometimes it's tricky getting a palette knife to, to look good with the brush, right? You know, but I'm trying to, to show you ways to get that done because there's some great things you can do with it. Okay, set that three quarter down, grab the knife and let's have some fun here. I'm going to start in the background and I'm going to press, see it's a very, it's a clean knife and I'm just going to press down very hard and rub up and down in little circles, like little ovals. Oh yes, look at that. Can you see that? How cool is that? Unexpected, right? That is super fun. Good. Okay. So now that you kind of have your grass and what's happening is in case it's kind of hard to tell what's happening is you're bending the knife and just a little bit of the blade here is touching. That's kind of pulling the paint up. It's really cool. So you can, the more you do it though, the, the more it kind of goes away. So be careful. It's just filling in that spot right there. All right. And remember, we're just using this to kind of add a little extra fun and, and texture. You can go back to the brush if you want. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to press a lot lighter though, because obviously we've got more paint in the foreground. Yes, you can drag some of that up. Carefully, you don't get a hard line though. Ah, yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Yes, that is so cool. Love it. Okay. So I'm going to, let's repeat that down here. Push hard. There we go. Good. And then down here, kind of just go larger brush strokes, more, mostly just brush strokes. <laughs> oh boy. Larger knife strokes, I guess. You can even flip it upside down and pull up like you would with a liner brush. How cool is that? And look, very quickly, we have created what feels like a, a, a more a little bit more of an impressionistic meadow, which is just super fun. So if you're ever looking to kind of change up your art, you know, if you're kind of in a rut, grab the palette knife. I know a lot of our work is so detailed that we don't use the palette knife a lot, but definitely try it and use it. You, just, you don't have to use it on everything, but you should definitely give it a shot because it can do some things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect. It's not just for rough work. It's also for beautiful details. I'm just going to squish in a little, a little more texture. So we have some knifed work back in the background a little, cause I think that would look, look really nice. Speaking of beautiful details, do you think we could work on maybe some flowers back here? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Let's try a little bit of white and a little bit of blue and see what that gives us. Scoop up some. Okay, there you go, a little flower. You don't want them all facing you, so just, you know, quick touches of color. There. Wow. Now I went ahead and just did a quick little, little idea of a forest, and here's just a big mass of dark. Now you wouldn't think that normally you could do a waterfall with the palette knife, but watch this. <laughs> yeah, so let me show you, I got just a soft, soft blue color, actually a little red into it, just so that it wasn't harsh blue. And look at this. Oh, 
how cool that is. Isn't that neat? I'm just trickling it around the rocks. Let it sort of disappear back here. I did do these trees with a palette knife. At least I highlighted them with a palette knife. And we've got other videos on, on palette knife paintings where I did trees. So I didn't think that was kind of interesting or, or unexpected at least. I kind of want to show you some different things that maybe you weren't so familiar with. There, isn't that cool? Huh, that is, I like that. Oh yeah. There, so you can kind of go crazy with it or you don't have to, it just depends on what you want to do. Now down here, I'm just gonna rub to get a little turbulence, or a little rushing water, and then mush it all together. <laughs> there you go. Get in there and smush that color because that's gonna help to create some reflections which are not the easiest thing in the world to do, soft, but let me show you how to make it easy. See, so I just grab this color and pull it down very firmly and that's all you need for now. Take a little white, sparkle the top. There, look at that. Take a little more white and just touch it down. Don't over highlight, just like you would with a brush. You wouldn't over highlight with the brush. Don't do it with a palette knife either. Just because you can glop it on doesn't mean you need to. Don't overdo. I would be really limited here if I was doing this with the brush. So I'm going to be exactly the same way with the palette knife. Extremely limited. Good. In fact, a lot of those look like they need to be brought down just one level. So there. Good. And then I think at the end here, I was painting with a brush. And that's a good way to do it. Just think if you're painting on a brush with a brush, how would you do it? And then do it the same way or similar way. There. I would add a little extra. Good. All right, well, I think we're done with this quick tip video. I hope you had a lot of fun. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and of course, this palette knife. Thanks for watching.